Tonight, we're taking a savory journey through one of the most flavorable events of the year. The Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation, also known as BAIC, just wrapped up its third annual Taste and Tell event. This event wasn't just a feast for the taste buds, it was a vital platform for local food processors from the family islands to showcase everything from exotic jams to homemade wine. We take this opportunity to discuss BAIC, the type of work the quasi-government agency does, the initiatives it has rolled out, and what's next. However, tonight's episode highlights its recent collaboration with the Small Business Development Center. Together, this past weekend, the third annual Taste and Tell event was aimed at tantalizing the palate and elevating small businesses into thriving enterprises. So stay tuned as we get started on the other side of this room. Welcome back to On The Record. Let's set the stage for a conversation that's about more than just food. It's about the future and self-sustainability of our nation. BAIC stands at the forefront of this mission, aiming to empower local entrepreneurs and diversify our economy through agricultural and industrial development. Tonight, we are joined by two distinguished guests who are instrumental in steering BAIC toward these lofty goals. First, we have Mrs. Tonja Burrows, the Assistant General Manager of the Food Processing Department, as well as LeVar H. Miller, Assistant Manager, Corporate Communications Department. Welcome to our show. Thank good you. Afternoon. Good Welcome. afternoon. All right, good. So I'm going to sort of jump right in, and we want to familiarize people, first of all, with BAIC and what it is that, that you do. You've been around a long time, yes. um, but a lot of times people just aren't sure. So let's start out by giving a brief overview of BAIC and your primary mission. Well, BAIC's primary mission is to help stimulate and promote entrepreneurship uh, throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. BAIC was established in 1981, December of 1981. I'm not old. Okay. <laughs> and it, was, it, it was enacted in March of 1982. Okay. And so, therefore, we've been around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, we've been making a substantial impact in the lives of those persons who are entrepreneurs. And that is the, what the mandate is all about. And so we assist persons, whether it be through our land policy um, that we are mandated to assist with property, um, whether it be through our orange economy that assists with persons in the creative area, or whether it be in um, the area of manufacturing. And so BAIC is well-rounded to assist persons who want to become entrepreneurs, who may not have access to land, who may not have a business plans where we have a business uh, a section that deals with that. And so we're committed. We have a hardworking team and staff that are there to assist the general public with their entrepreneurial needs. And how open are people to, or how, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say open, uh, do people really utilize BAIC as they should? Are they, obviously, are they aware of what all you provide and do they utilize the resources because when you're talking about a business plan, you have to pay for those kinds of things if you're doing it on your own. Or, you know, when you have to, we talk about getting advice, those things cost money. But if you're offering them, are people really aware and taking advantage of the services as they should? I, I think that we've done 
a good job in terms of informing the general public of ways in which they can utilize uh, the opportunities that are presented to them. But there's always work that, that can be done to improve what it is that we're, we're doing and offering services. And so we would like persons to, and this is why we're here, we're here so that they would know that these uh, opportunities still exist to them and we're here to service them. And so we, we try our best to ensure that the word and the message get out through mediums such as this, um, with your show, and other uh, social mediums like that. Okay. Um, Tanj, I want to bring you into the discussion now and tell us what it is that you're responsible for within the food processing department. Well, basically, I'm responsible for um, encouraging and helping food processors um, throughout the Bahamas, um, whether they're from the family islands or in New Providence, um, source their equipment, um, being able to understand what is required to put on their labels, um, understanding how to deal with the pricing aspect of, of their products and stuff. And so we really want to make sure that a lot of the Bahamian, the Bahamian public itself is aware of what type of um, process items are being produced locally here. And you say that, you know, and that's intriguing to me because we always hear the complaints about our food import and what all things we're importing and why aren't we making more uh, of these things locally. But do you think the public has an appreciation of how many things are made locally and processed here? Well, I think they're beginning to see it now. Um, the show we call Taste and Tell, that's their aim, is really basically to get people aware of what is being produced here locally. We have a large population of processors who make the jams, the jellies, and the pepper sauce. Now, we don't see an increase in a lot of persons um, that are actually producing regular hot sauce, similar to the A and B and the you know, Tabasco hot sauce. We don't see that much here, but we have a large population of those particular items and then drinks as well, too. So what we're aiming for is to really get those type of persons out there to the market um, so persons can stop really importing a lot of these, you know, Welch's jams and all those because we have a lot of producers here that produce fabulous, fabulous jams and jellies. Which brings me now to my next point. How do you all support the development of agriculture and industry? Um, because for so long we have talked about um, expanding the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. We have talked about wanting to do more in industry. So what are you guys doing really to help to support uh, those areas? Mm -hmm. Well, well, BAIC, as I said, we have multiple facets. Mm -hmm. Whereas for the agricultural side of it, we assist those persons on the family island that are farmers. Uh, farming is a business. And so if you know the different process of farming, you plant the seeds, then you cultivate them and you, you pick them and then you send them to the packing house. Um, it's at the packing house where we start to grade those items. And then once they are at the standard that we are able to support those particular items from each farmer, then they come over to New Providence where we have them at the produce exchange. And we use the produce exchange as an avenue to promote and to sell um, the items that our family island farmers from throughout the Bahamas produce. And every week, um, basically on a Friday, is when those fresh produce items comes into Nassau. Now, for the people who don't know or are ashamed to ask, where's the produce exchange? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, the produce exchange for many years was on the dock, um, mm -hmm. uh, where they were situated because I guess it was easier at the time for them to just come off. That's off where the loading. boats came. Right, right, the boats came in. Um, but we recently, a few years back, moved the produce exchange to our headquarters area on the Soldier Road Industrial Park. Mm -hmm. And since then, the support has been continuous. You know, people are looking for healthy, fresh produce. And there's nothing like supporting your own when you know that a produce was just um, cultivated and, and, and picked a week ago from the ground and now it's in your home. And so what, what we do is we're trying to encourage more persons to get into farming. Because for so long, the, the age of a farmer is in their early or late 70s. I mean, and there's, there's a stigma as well. Let's be right. honest. People don't see a lot of, for a long time, it was not seen as, you know, the kind of job you wanted for your no. children. No. Or, you know, you didn't aspire to be a farmer. Because right. uh, it's hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to, you know, but 
but now I'll interject and say that farming now has so much new technology. Mm -hmm. It's not hard as it used to be because we have greenhouse, you know, we have aquaponics, we have various types of farming. And so farming can become almost like sexy, I guess mm -hmm. you can say yeah, in a And there's a science because, to it yeah, as well. Yeah, there's a science, you know. You know the of course, and so we're seeing a number of persons who would have gone off to school and come back. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and they bring the knowledge that they have to, to use farming that they do now in the trailer in a con contained environment. Mm -hmm. And so where they can produce stuff year round. Sure. And, so, yeah. and so this is what we're seeing. We want to encourage persons to be innovative as it relates to farming, because we must be able to feed ourselves. Yeah. You know, we had a 9-11 where that caused a situation, then we had COVID that caused it. So uh, as a country, we should want to ensure that if the outside sources decide sure. to close their borders for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. we're able to survive. And so, so our role, we see it as very important as it relates to the agriculture aspect of it, um, to promote individuals to get into the business side of farming. And so we're, we're very committed to doing that. Um, like I said, that is one aspect. The land. Um, many persons may say, okay, well, we, we need to do this particular project, but we don't have the land to do it. But BAIC has thousands of acres of land uh, in Abaco, in Illusra. Really? Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we've made it, we've had more persons signing up and being approved for land during the last two years than we've had in a long time. And so really? it shows that there's an interest yeah. and persons from an entrepreneurial standpoint um, to get into business. And so we're here to help facilitate that process as best as we can, and we're seeing Bahamians respond. So but you, the stipulation is you have to use the land for farming. Well, no, not only farming. Mm -hmm. oh. farming. Um, now we're, we're using it for touristic development as well. Really? Or mm -hmm. manufacturing development. So it, it's not just um, limited to farming aspect. You know, there's a lot of um, Airbnbs now that are out there, and so we want to encourage persons um, to somewhat take advantage of that sector. You know, so many times we say, well, Bahamians don't own the hotels and that sure. type of stuff, but this is your way of getting involved in it from a, a niche market, so to speak, yes. a cotton industry, uh, where you can apply, and once our board approves it, because our board does make the final decision, um, then you're, you're on your way to having an Airbnb, which can attract persons from all over wow. the world. So this is what the impact that a BAIC does. And we want to continue to um, have the general public just be aware that they can come in to see us to, like you say, the business plans are at a reasonable rate. Uh, at one point we offered it for free, but you know, we wanted to mm. add some value to it. Sure. And, and so therefore there's a minimal fee now um, under I think maybe $600 or so for a business plan. Um, there are other aspects where the manufacturing area, we, we have the property that you can build, construct. In fact, if you visit our Soldier Road Industrial uh, Park now, you'll see that there's two ongoing construction because persons are responding to the atmosphere and nice. they want to get involved. That's very encouraging. Yeah. I want to go back, um, and I, I know uh, you mentioned it, but I want yeah, both of you involved at this point to talk about really what have, what things have, what strategies have we adapted or what changes have come about as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and what we saw? I'll start you know, with you. Well, we, we saw an increase of person becoming self-sufficient as in learning how to make new products. Um, and these products became so popular during the time that they just became into business, full-time business. So we've seen a lot of people transition into the full-time business. Yes, okay. you know, and before it would just be a hobby or, you know, they would go to our class and they would learn this and, yeah, I do this for my family and friends, mm -hmm. but now it becomes an outright business. And so we have a lot of those type of persons. And um, one of the things that really um, I would want to say about Taste and Tell itself is the fact that our goal first in the beginning years was to really target awareness because mm -hmm. we wanted people to be aware that these people are out there. And then the following year, we got involved with um, Milo Butler. We signed an MOU with them to deal with the wholesale aspect of, of these persons. And now this year, we are focusing on, we have selected four food processors who we will, um, between us and SBDC, we would invest in these processors to get their business up to standards, to say, to build capacity, to be able to deal with like a wholesale company 
to have their product tested to be able to market them properly so we can be able to see them on our shelves here locally as well as you know eventually they would be able to be abroad you know because we have a high population of cottage industry here in the Bahamas um, we don't have very much small business itself and so we're trying to get them to become small business then medium then large business for the people who are asking I'm one of them so what is the distinct difference between the cottage industry and the small business? Because to me, they all seem small. So yeah. what differentiates Well, them? basically, um, the cottage industry, you would have them dealing with processing at a home in their okay. house. Mm -hmm. Okay, a small business means that you have a small place, a place like a mini factory or somewhere where you specifically just focus Brick on and that. Water, yes. basically. And mm -hmm. then persons can be able to come and purchase from that location, you know but a lot of persons are doing it at their homes. And so we are encouraging them to get these things to be able to move up, where this equipment, because a lot of times, you know, it's just one person doing this whole stuff sure, and you can't sure. really scale up with just one person. So you might need an equipment to help you to scale up. And more people. And so, yes, and more yeah. persons, more staff and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to, um, SBDC and BAIC really partner this year to assist those four selected persons who we would definitely help them to get to the next level. So, LaVar, I want to, I mean, that's a really good example mm -hmm. and good mm -hmm. news of how we have uh, taken the lessons of COVID mm -hmm. from that perspective, but, you know, from, the, from, a, from a larger uh, view, mm -hmm. um, from a bird's eye view, mm -hmm. as industries, how have we pivoted since COVID? Have we gone back to a lot of the old things or have we really moved in a new direction, particularly when we're talking about the orange economy? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that in, 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 as it relates to the orange economy, it allowed many persons during the, the COVID uh, era um, to be creative. Uh, if you notice, there was a lot of downtime, and so persons were taking advantage of the social media aspect, and, and, and a lot of persons who may normally not be into that part of it were then driven because of the time that they had on their hands. Of course, nothing and else. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so what it did was it, it created a lot of persons who were talented, but wasn't sure where to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And they have now be, uh, gotten a lot of followings. And so the creative industry, I think there's room for expansion. Um, and so BAIC is there to ensure that we assist those persons who may want to um, do something from a, an artistic uh, point of view. You know, normally we would have our programs that deals with the uh, shell making programs, the, the straw making, uh, programs, the jewelry making and stuff that are all native to the Bahamas. And so we, we continue to do that throughout the islands where persons are now, we have more persons creating and making soaps. We have more persons now through BAIC cre creating and making candles. Mm -hmm. So imagine now if we can now um, assist with having those items at the different um, hotels on the family islands. And tourist but, touch points. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. So, and so the idea now is to not only assist persons in making these items that are necessary, mm -hmm. but to now have these items throughout the Bahamas in the small cottage um, hotels and, mm -hmm. and other areas, and boutiques. hotels, boutiques. Mm -hmm. um, that could be beneficial to persons from an entrepreneurial standpoint. You know, we've got to go to a break, but I'm going to say this. Whenever tourists... Whenever you visit a place, mm -hmm. whether you're visiting the Bahamas, whatever, you want things that are native. Yes. Right. Right. And that is something I think that we have to really, really focus on because there's so many opportunities. You talk to, to the folks in tourism and they said, you know, it's a wide open right. market, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's just getting these things, you know, from, uh, from out of the head to the creatives, manufactured and into the hands yes. of the tourists. Right. We'll talk a little bit more. When we come back, we're going to talk about the unforgettable flavors of the Taste and Tell event. This is On The Record. We'll be back right after. And we're back. We turn our focus now to highlight the Taste and Tell event. Uh, this annual event, now in its third year, has not only become a showcase for local 
gastronomy, but also a pivotal platform for food processors from across our islands. Strategically, the initiative aims to connect local food producers with larger markets, including food stores, wholesale distributors, and that all-important tourism sector. So my first question to you about that <laughs> event was, how, did you, how do you measure the success of it? How do you walk away knowing, you know what, this was really great, or uh, we didn't quite hit the mark, maybe next year. How do you measure the success of, of this event? Well, basically, um, we have two ways of measuring. Um, we left with a lot of the vendors being pleased that they were able to get a lot of exposure. Um, persons came in and even gave them some tips on stuff that they noticed um, that they should improve in. And, and also, we had a good flow of tourists that came through. Mm -hmm. And so, this is the first year that we would have had such a a large amount of tourists that came in, stopped in, and patronized the vendors and stuff. But it, it all focuses on us assisting them and moving them from where they were last year to moving them even bigger this year. So a lot of them has been working on building capacity. And so you saw that um, was big this year at the Day and Tell because a lot of persons came in with a lot of supplies. Usually they came in with a minimum amount, but the supplies that they bought in, they were able to move. And we don't just have the persons at the event. A lot of them are a part of our produce exchange. So they're in the produce exchange or they're at Milo Butler. Mm -hmm. So we try to give them a double exposure because our aim for this event is the back, the back story behind it, which is to help with the reduction of food imports in our country. So this year it was at the Western Esplanade, correct? Yes. Why was that area uh, chosen? Well, because we started to grow. And um, expansion means that we have new horizon and new opportunities to interact with a much greater set of the public, as well as the tourists and stuff. And so that's why we chose that area. I do want to talk about the involvement of the SBDC. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it earlier on. Mm -hmm. How do you all work um, or what is their involvement? How do you all work together? And what's sort of the end goal of that collaboration? Well, basically, um, the two agencies wanted to assist small business, small cottage industry persons. And so our goal was to help them because, you know, we don't see commercial, a lot of commercials with these type of persons on there where you can get your pepper sauce. You don't see that. You know, you have to go into a store or somebody selling it at a farmer's market. And so we wanted to help them be able to get the marketing done up correctly. Very important. Um, you know, be able to have the labeling done, um, testing done, because a lot of them have not gotten their stuff tested. And testing is very important because in now in society, people want to know what's in their stuff. They don't want to just be having the guessing game because we, we read labels. Yeah, yeah, we, you are, know. we are label readers. And mm -hmm. Jerome, you might be allergic to something That's inside right. of there, and so it's important that they understand and these labels show that hey, I might have something in here that can affect somebody's life. I understand you had a pepper eating contest this Oh, year. yes. We had a pepper eating contest. We no had way. quite a few competitions <laughs> this year. Mm -hmm. This year, we have upped the game with the competition. We mm -hmm. had um, a few demos. We had a candy making demo. Um, we had a sweet potato making demo. And then we also had the chef competition where we incorporate a processed item into a local dish. And so persons can understand how to do these type of things and everyday housewives or, you know, single parents can be able to cook these type of foods at home every day. Mm -hmm. um, the other things were we had a mixologist competition and where persons got to showcase making these local drinks, um, non-alcoholic as well as alcoholic um, drinks for persons to experience of how these bartenders and mixologists put these different colors together and being able to show off their Bahamian heritage in their drinks. Um, we Very also had a drink which was done almost, it tastes like um, conch salad. 
And so uh, it was. I'm not sure. It was very interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I feel, but I'm okay. It was an acquired taste. Uh, yeah, we had yeah. a guy who made something. He was just he used the native fruits, and it was really really a good drink. So tell me if I feel about the pepper eating going there. Okay, your pepper eating. I want no one was brave enough to put themselves. We had approximately four persons that took the risk. We had one female and three males. Good for her. And um, she tried it out. You know, we had the different heat levels. It started off very minute with the finger pepper, and then it moved up to the jalapenos, and then it got to um, the last pepper that the person ate was the ghost pepper. Mm -hmm. And then it was, he won the competition because mm -hmm. everybody else was not ready for the rest of the heat because we were going all the way to California Reaper and Trinidadian Scorpion. The thing is to make it exciting. Of yes. course. Um, yeah, to, to, to let persons know that these are things that we can locally grow in terms yeah. of the pepper and stuff. Uh -huh. And so we, we provided that level of excitement. And, and the thing is to always add to it. And yes. so we had the Bush competition, yeah, Bush, the Bush tea, co tea competition, com competition mm -hmm. that went well as well. Um, the support, like I must say that from the tourist aspect of it, was great. And so that is something that we're going to work on too, to develop even further. Especially if you're at the Western Esplanade, yes. you're near downtown. Yes. Uh -huh. so, yeah. so there was, and I think on that day there were like six cruise ships in. Nice. So nice. The, the, the tracking of tourists moving back and forth through the, um, the, the event showed us that even them found it interesting mm -hmm. to see what is locally made in the Bahamas. So let me ask you, how has all of this really helped to raise the profile of BAIC? Mm -hmm. Because I know of a time mm -hmm. um, where, you know, one, we weren't quite sure what BAIC did, mm -hmm. and there was not a lot of activity happening mm -hmm. around, not to say that there weren't things happening, happening right, yeah. but it didn't see, there, there was not a lot of public attention. attention mm -hmm. right. So are these things helping to really raise the profile and bring more people to you? I, I think it is, yes, it um, is. And, and that's yeah. where we need to increase our, our, our profile because many times persons get us confused with BAMSI. You know, we're, that, two, we're, we're two government yeah, agencies, yeah. but we, mm -hmm. we function totally different. Mm -hmm. um, BAMSI is responsible for the uh, educational aspect of agriculture. Right. Um, we are responsible for the Business. entrepreneurial aspect mm -hmm. of, of small business um, and, and creating new businesses. And so our focus now is to ensure that we have a campaign where we out there more to the public. We, we do more um, collaborative efforts with other government agencies and we have done so so far with SBDC that has been mentioned, which is going well. We've also done an MOU with um, the Bank of the Bahamas. And so persons who may need a, a loan for a particular project um, business venture can come into us and we would do the necessary um, collaborative efforts with uh, the Bank of the Bahamas to ensure that their process is a lot smoother uh, as it relates to them um, seeking finance for, the, for their particular project. And also we also sign an MOU with the Bahamas Development Bank to assist agricultural projects. And so there is a, there, there is a lot of work to be done, but we are committed to doing that. Um, we want to see more successful businesses. And so joining partners with the other uh, government agencies and even some private agencies as well um, helps us to move in that direction. So, you know, I have to tell you, you know, as much as I love my job, I'm looking towards retirement. Mm -hmm. So if I, <laughs> if I decide I want to start an Airbnb business, mm -hmm. I can come into to be AIC right. to, to yes. start that process. So, so right. So what, what you would do is we have a, you can... Uh, call us and make an appointment um, uh, with our entrepreneurial department that mm. deals with that area and then they would uh, go through an interview process with you to find out exactly what it is that you want to do, to do which type you may you may have some funds but you don't know what you want to do with your business or start a particular business and they will sure. be able to guide you as such and then you may need a business plan and so the business plan encaptures where you see your business going in the next five, 10 years. Nice. And so all that is in there where you have an outline as to how many staff you may need, what type of marketing you're going to do, um, your projections and all of that. And so we, we cover all that aspect with our entrepreneurial department. And then you may need property, okay? And so you may need property, um, let's say on a particular island. Um, hopefully we would have uh, the land there. You'll have anything in Long Island. No, we don't have any land in Long Island, but this, no. this could be a pitch so that the government could give us land. For sure. You know, so, sure. so what we want to do is we also want to increase 
our land uh, capacity. Okay. Um, um, because we're, we're basically for New Providence, we're, we're at a, a max. I'm sure. And so, which raises another question. How do you, you know, increase that capacity? Is this a discussion you have with, with government and which agency? Or, or how does it work? I'm just curious yeah. about how you all acquire well, the land. Well, well, we are a quasi-government right. agency. So you, and you, so get, you we, get the appointment. We, you you we, already yeah. have the connect. Yeah. 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 And, and so there's just a, a request that has to be made. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that those in the other aspect would want to see, well, okay, um, what are you all doing? Do you all, are you all just asking for land or is there a, an actual realized. need for it? Right. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that we've seen an increase in people responding to us suggests that there is a need to increase our land uh, acquisition. Uh, and so to help promote um, entrepreneurship on another level. I say that to say that there are many persons who may say, well, well to find land may be costly for them. And so coming to us will reduce some of that cost mm -hmm. to them, which will help them focus um, their funding or whatever the situation is in terms of money aspect in other areas. And so that is why um, it's important that we do get the word out of what it is that BAIC does, mm -hmm. no, this um, is how we have affected the lives of so many persons, and we yeah. have. I have to tell you, this is quite an educational journey for me, mm -hmm. because there are some things that I know that you do, right. mm -hmm. but really not to this extent. So mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot, which right. is why I And, think and there's I so many the different aspects of it, and that's why through Mrs. Burroughs' department, uh, the food processing department, that she has this show that focused simply on our food processors. Mm -hmm. Because previously there wasn't an outlet for them to showcase and, sure. and to be the main focus. Not of in a event. single place. They would yeah. usually yeah. show up at other events yeah, yeah. or right, be right. a part of something right. yeah. as right. opposed to having a something signature event just for them. For them. Yes. Yeah. And so this is what we're committed to. Um, we've had it previously with our Bahama Arts Festival mm -hmm. in the past that focus on those who create uh, souvenir items and, and those stuff. We also had last year the smell and tell that highlighted uh, persons who make candles and other scented items. And so the idea is to um, assist entrepreneurs um, from various aspects as best as we can. I'll tell you a lot of what I see. Mm -hmm. People, you know, creatives create. Right. Mm -hmm. And as a creative, even in this space, it's the minutia sometimes that drives me crazy. Yeah. So you're talking about people who create and that's all they're interested in, but now you have to run a business. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem comes in because yeah. you're great at what you do, Ooh, but you're gonna be terrible in running the business. business. Yeah. You know, I'm interested in keeping the account, and all, but I know that these things have to be done. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're talking about a business plan, because mm -hmm. again, I may have a great idea, mm -hmm. may have a great product, but I just do not or cannot get it to market. Yeah. And our business uh, entrepreneurial planning department hosts different workshops throughout the year so that persons who may um, have challenges in knowing how to price their items mm -hmm. or how sure. to do accounting for their business, um, uh, we offer um, these workshops and seminars basically for free. And so, and so the idea is, like I said previously, we want to see more successful businesses. And so we are charged from the government to provide and facilitate as best as we can um, to ensure that we have the end goal is more successful businesses because then it trickles down to having more persons employed and then they trickle down in assisting the economy of course. and there's growth. Yeah. And so our role is very serious. Um, we're glad that we were able to partner with Milo Butler and Sons where previously um, those persons may have had a difficulty getting their stuff on the shelves. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well now through BAIC they don't. It's a direct, and so, and a so direct there's a direct line, line. Yeah. and so mm -hmm. we're, we're appreciative for that effort. And I think we're, how many persons do we have now involved in that? Um? Well, right now we have approximately four um, persons that we have entered into the Milo Butler. Mm -hmm. But we've had about nine processors who are in the produce exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they are selling things from jams, jellies to coconut But there is a potential for growth and growth. for yes, more. and for more. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to stick a pin right there, which mm -hmm. is going to lead us into our break and then, of course, into our final segment. So stay with us as we unveil what's next for BAIC and to learn how you, our viewers, much like me, can play a part in the promising future. If you want to hear about the Airbnb or how to get your things to market, definitely stay tuned. Yes. We're going to be back with more on the record <laughs> right after this.
All right. With a mandate to enhance the industrial and agricultural landscape of the Bahamas, BAIC is continuously evolving. This evolution aims to support existing industries and incubate new initiatives that could redefine the economic fiber of our nation. So let's talk future. Mm -hmm. All right. So for the folks who are sitting at home watching this or watching it online or wherever they're watching and thinking, you know what? I have a great idea or I have, you know, I'm making, I'm making things on the weekends, mm -hmm. but I want to, I want to expand that industry. I want to turn this into a full time. I have all these ideas, but I don't know, you know, where to go. What should they do to sort of get to the next phase now? Or what things do they need to come armed with when they come to see you? Well, when you come with a food idea sure. and stuff, once you come there to BAIC, then you would come and speak to me. Mm -hmm. And then um, I would advise you on if you need development of your product or if you don't have a product and you want to get into a particular area, what equipment you're going to need. Um, what is required by the, the Bureau of Standards, um, as in your labeling and your packaging and stuff. And there is a Bureau of Standards, yes. so you just can't make things and put them out no, there to sell, right? No. Okay, that's and important. And we have you a that, food right? safety yes. um, PASA as well, too, who deals with the food safety aspect of things. And so there are many steps that they would have to go through. Um, environmental health will have to come in as well, too, because we need to make sure they have proper water connection because it's no sense in you processing food um, with well water because you know that could be contaminated <clears throat> so we always advise our clients to make sure they are on the government water sure. um, so when they process you know we are sure that it's safe it, it's safe for the public who might impart in it okay um, basically we we try to give you the whole package so when you leave there um, after finding out that you have a particular product you want to get involved, then we recommend that you get a business plan from the entrepreneur planning department. Mm. So we kind of give you the whole complete rundown, one-stop shop. LAN is also here at BAIC, so right. you're not left so now I have, I have, let's say it's food processing, or mm -hmm. I have some other idea, and I say, okay, mm -hmm. these are things I need, then what? Mm -hmm. Well, then once, once, we, once you, you come to us and you go through that, that process, then the board uh, would make the decision if it's land related. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have land and you need the funds for um, to help further develop your business, sure. um, then we can either assist you with going to one of those areas that I mentioned, or you may have a private institution that you want to go to. Mm -hmm. So what you would have done was you would have come to us, we would have developed your business plan for you. And from that business plan, you would have taken it to wherever private institution finding a funding institution that would be able to assist you. So that's BAIC making an impact. That's BAIC facilitating the process. And so um, once that journey happens, then we will see if, if it is approved, then we will follow you to ensure that we don't just um, have you starting a business and then we just back off. Sure. No, we want to ensure that there are checks and balance along the way. Mm -hmm. And so that department will, will call up and find out, okay, what's going on? Are, are you having any difficulties? And you are, can call as well, I'm sure, if you exactly. have if you yes. Yes. encounter yes. roadblocks. Yeah. And w one of the things I liked is the fact that you say you put on workshops throughout mm -hmm. the year to assist people with the, you know, with running the business because mm -hmm. that's where a lot of businesses fail. Yeah, it's a great idea, a great product, but it is really in the implementation mm -hmm. Um, or the execution where they fall down. Of course, and also we also assist with um, um, retirement um, entrepreneurial seminars. See, now you're so, talking. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> so there may be persons in different government sectors or, or even in the private sector that would need to have an idea as to the process. And so we've done uh, partnerships with the Royal Bahamas Defense Force for their pre-retirement uh, workshops and that has now included other aspects of law enforcement. And so while we would have started out with them, that now the police are involved, the prison are involved. And so we're expanding our reach as it relates to getting the information there for persons who may want to go into and, another and aspect. Let me tell you why that is so important. A lot of times people are working mm -hmm. and you know that retirement is coming, mm -hmm. but you don't know what the next step is. Yes. You know, you know you could be out of this full time job, right. Right. but you still got years yes. you mm -hmm. know, of life left on you and you're like, you know, now what am I going, going to, to do? do? Yeah. And so many times a person may panic because they're going into a different life uh, uh, process. Mm -hmm. sure. um, but what we want to do is encourage them not to fear 
the fact that, okay, while you would have been in an environment where you're used to your nine to five or whatever the situation was in terms of your job uh, for so long and now you're on your own, so to speak, but if you want to start a business that you're passionate about, that you have knowledge of, then we're there to assist. And what we want to do, and I, I keep on saying it because it's important, um, to see successful businesses. Because when we see successful businesses, then it allows the economy to further grow. And so uh, when we're able to impact the lives of that individual, that, that lady or that, that gentleman that would have come into Mrs. Burroughs to say that, okay, I want to create this particular pepper, how can you assist us? And we see the growth of that particular business. It shows that our relevance in the terms of the economy of the Bahamas. And so we just want to encourage persons, not just in New Providence, but throughout. We have reaches on um, Grand Bahama. We have an uh, office there. We have an office in Abaco. We have an office in Exuma. We have an office in Andres. In and so Elusa as well. So, you know, we're all about um, to help um, promote successful businesses. Well, in, in that regards, I we have a client who came out this year to taste and tell. She's a principal of a school. She's getting ready to retire next year. And she have over 20 products. She's been watching her mom. She learned from her mother. And she actually wants to get into it full time. That is going to be her job. She's already found out where what all she needs to start this business up. She's interested in getting her business plan done up because she said this is this is going to be her livelihood when she retired. Because she said, "Oh, I know, definitely can't survive of the, the you know retirement." Yeah, just so off of your pension. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I needed this opportunity, and I'm so glad that I was able to connect, so you guys can help me on this journey. You know what's yeah. interesting? We started out talking really about opportunities for you know for entrepreneurs and businesses and you think young people mm -hmm. you think people just starting out or wanting mm -hmm. to make a career change but mm -hmm. here we are we sort of annexed into a whole other discussion uh -huh. about you know those who are approaching or at retirement yes. and what this can mean for them but to um, supplement an income yeah an opportunity. So, so BAIC has reach all over and that's why what we do in our role that we do is so important because it's not just for the young persons when we want to encourage them. Yeah. We want to guide them along a successful path. But there's also for those who are getting ready to leave one aspect of, of their livelihood in terms of that, that basic uh, funding that they've been used to all along, that, that, that security, so to speak. And so what we do is we provide the best in terms of information-wise, in terms of letting them know that we are able to assist them along the way with their particular business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just want you all to know that I, you know, when you get a land in Long Island, mm -hmm. look for me, I want to do a horseback <laughs> riding ride, <laughs> Airbnb right. on the beach in Long right. Island. I love this job, yeah. but you know, I, I <laughs> do it this level. <laughs> and, and, and but but that, isn't that a good opportunity? Oh yeah, no, yeah. It, it, is really, it has really gotten mm -hmm. me to thinking, which right. I'm sure others who are watching the show as well, like, right. what's next? Or yeah. even you may find yourself in a job you just don't like, just for the record, mm -hmm. I do like my job. Yes. But there are people who are looking for oh, that change yes. and yes. that difference and just don't know where to go. Right. Yeah. right. And, and, and so we're, we're hopeful. We are trying to see if we can get some land um, in Exuma. Um, we're working so on maybe that. Maybe I'll go to Exuma then. Okay, yeah. Long Island. But, but listen, the Bahamas is our, back, <laughs> yeah. is our backyard. Oh, right? definitely. Yeah. And yeah. so we want to ensure that person yes. has the same um, access to uh, land opportunities all over. And, and so we don't want to leave any particular island out. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important for us to have a reach for, a for all reach. our all yeah. areas. Mm -hmm. Because we want to grow the economy of all of the islands in the Bahamas so that the Bahamian people can benefit. So I want to ask, though, I mean, the, the Taste and Town and the other things that you all are doing are, are, are magnificent mm -hmm. um, and wonderful initiatives. But is there anything else on the drawing board for you in the coming year or years that you think will help um, to, to grow these small businesses and to help more people to get into the areas uh, that, that you're focusing on? Well, in, in the processing um, industry, what, like I said, the biggest issue is for us is to ensure that we get as much food processors out there, out there on the shelves, um, even being in the produce exchange, that's a lot less jam or jellies you have to What about import. hotels and do you they know? use these and products so, as well? Yes, and we're going to, um, one of our game is to eventually move into that area. But that's why we have now selected four of these processors. 
who now will have their products to be able to go into a hotel because they're meeting the standards that are required. And that's important, mm -hmm. meeting the standards. Often mm -hmm. we complain mm -hmm. that we, are, we don't have a way in, mm -hmm. but you have to meet the standard yes. to get in. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because mm -hmm. you want to, when persons buy stuff, they need that assurance to say that it is done correctly. Um, there's not going to be a risk for them indulging and listen, in your let's product. Let's be honest. If you are at a Bahama or mm -hmm. you are at the Ocean Club mm -hmm. or you know you are at resorts, world and wherever, and they put those products on the table, they must be at a particular standard. standard. Yes, People are paying, to. you know, and they ain't coming just to support you. They are paying for the experience mm -hmm. and it has to be up to standard. Yes. Right? You know. And so that, that is our role. Our role is to ensure that we, we, we get you to that point or assist in you getting to that point um, to ensure that at the end of the day, your item can stand up to any other item anywhere in the world. Yep. And we have persons who, who are known for their products. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that it's something that can't be done. Sure. You know, we have the mechanisms in place to ensure that we get you to that point. And so we're committed to it. Um, our, our staff, you know, we're, work for us is seeing the impact that we have on the lives of people that come to us. Mm -hmm. Seeing them grow from one aspect of their business idea to seeing it into reality. And so we, we're doing that. We probably need to do better at telling our story because there are so many different stories oh, this out is, there. This is a good start. And this is why uh, we're yeah, here. Very so happy. We, we want to ensure that we continue this relationship where we let the public know that we're not just talking about um, pie and ass uh, situations, um, but we're talking about impacting the lives of people. Yeah. And so we're, we're doing that, and we would like to thank you, of course, um, for providing this medium for us to do so. Well, I tell you, you have certainly sparked my interest. I was not quite sure what all we were going to talk about and, mm -hmm. and the death, but I really said, you know, I'm happy to say that I've learned a lot sitting here mm -hmm. and, and, you know, just getting this information. Now, you know, I always believe in, in leaving people with information on where they can find out more. So, mm -hmm. how, you know, before I come in and, and really have that meeting, where can I go and do some reading and ensure mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm well equipped when I come for that mm -hmm. initial meeting or when I come mm -hmm. to... To, to talk about my business. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, we have our Facebook page, and our Facebook page is, um, we put a lot of the stuff that we're doing, the workshops, okay. um, what we're Great planning, um, events that we're going to have. And so we populate the Facebook page with a lot of stuff like that. So persons can also call in to BAIC and ask for myself or Ms. Mr. Miller or any of our managers there um, and ask them questions in regards to what is, what is the requirements or what do they need to do and how can they get established and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. So folks, I, I, I want to first of all congratulate you on, on your recent event. I am so sorry I missed it. Mm -hmm. But I will put it as a placeholder next year. Please to come do. I'm a foodie, so oh, anything yes, with food, well, I want to come. Definitely. Taste. And then we maybe can make you a judge, you know? Oh, you know now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're talking. Yes. Enjoy, you know, definitely. I have really a discerning good. palate, so I look yes. forward to it. But I just I want to congratulate you for the initiatives that you're doing. I think far mm -hmm. too often in our country, we're focused on what's not what's not happening or what's going wrong. Mm -hmm. But here it is, you know, uh, you all certainly seem to be on the path to getting it right. And yes. you are getting it right. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you that that's important. I believe in small businesses. I believe in entrepreneurship. I believe yeah. in manufacturing. I believe in, in, in capitalizing on the things that are already there. Right. We have a vibrant tourism industry. Oh, yes, we and do. we need to become stakeholders in that industry mm -hmm. as payments. Not, and no disrespect, not just working in the hotels and, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that aspect, but being business owners mm -hmm. who are benefiting. And guess what? You can do both. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, yes. there's no reason why you can't have your full time mm -hmm. as well as have your business as yes. well, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I want to thank you and, and congratulate you. And are there any other things coming up soon that we need to be aware of to have our eye on? Any other things that the public well, can... We just, can want, we just want to tell persons to, to stay tuned. You mm -hmm. will hear from us. Um, follow the Facebook follow page, our right? Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We're very active on that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we we want to ensure that we reach all aspects. We reach the farmer in Eleuthera. We reach the farmer in Inago or Andrus, and we assist them to help promote their products. Um, but then we also want persons to know that it is good to eat healthy, yes. fresh products. Yeah, we didn't even talk and about so, that. Right, and so, yeah. so many different aspects. Yeah. So, so helping to grow that aspect of it as well. And then we want persons to know that if they need um, 
coaching, financial coaching or business coaching, that they can come to us. Um, if they need to get into the food aspect, they can come to, um, to us for processing. And so BAIC is well equipped to assist um, persons of an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial nature. And so, and so we're just committed to that. And so we just like to say thank you. And the products exchange is on Fridays? The, well, the products exchange is open throughout the week. Right. The, 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 the produce comes in on Friday. So on that's when you can Friday, get fresh. On yeah. Friday, on Friday. So many you guys. You're open on the weekends? Or? Saturday. It's open Saturday. from Monday yeah. to Saturday. To so Saturdays. Like, okay. If I miss Friday, it comes Saturday. Come yes. Saturday. Makes sense. So Listen. We, we want to encourage persons, though, to get into farming. Sure. Because that, that's important, too. From that aspect, yeah, to grow that aspect, no, and it's 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 very important, and it's sustaining. We it's learned in COVID yes. how important it is to be self-sustaining. And, and there's money involved in it oh, too. Definitely. I mean, yeah. I, keep yeah. in mind now, you have many older, successful mm -hmm. millionaires make, make that money. are farmers in this mm -hmm. country. See, you're making me rethink now my degree. You know, you got to be yourself. Okay, agreed. Listen, thank you so very much. You're I want to congratulate you and encourage you uh, to continue your good work. All right, thank you thank so you. very you're much. You're quite welcome. All right, from the vibrant taste and tell event to the promising horizons of new initiatives, we've seen just how pivotal the Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation is to fostering a sustainable and diverse economic future for our islands. BAIC is not just making strides for the agricultural industry, but strides for every Bahamian. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to our guests for not only joining us tonight, but for their relentless work behind the scenes at BAIC. We appreciate you. Their work ensures that the richness of our Bahamian culture and industry is preserved, thrives on both local and international stages. Let's look forward to what the future holds and let's continue to support the phenomenal work being done for and by communities. Until next time. All right. Thank you.